Very good evening folks, and I'd like to take a bit of time here today to try to stress the urgency here on behalf of the believer to adhere to sound biblical doctrine. So we're going to go through quite a few scriptures here. I don't know how long the series is going to be. I'm guessing three or four videos, but uh, we'll hopefully keep it within that. And I don't know about you folks, but personally I've noticed a trend towards attacking both the authority of the scripture as well as undermining the counsel of the scripture themselves in terms of the doctrinal component that's vital for the betterment and welfare of the saints. So I've noticed themes like attacking the authority of the scriptures being more prominent. In addition, I also see themes introduced by parties that most of us are acquainted with that knowingly or otherwise attack, attack the doctrinal components that are essential for the believer. So this particular video uh, is done here for the intent to instill with the believer the urgency to adhere to and to defend sound biblical doctrine as our duty and as an obligation to uphold the truth in agreement with the counsel of the scriptures. Now I don't know about you folks but I've noticed a real complacency concerning sound biblical doctrine. It seems to be running rampant and the only Jesus matters mentality seems to carry the model of the day. So this video series is designed to refute that mentality. Now, uh, for an opener, I'm going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3:14. In Revelation 3:14, the scriptures state, "And unto the angel of the church of the Lady of Sion's write, these things say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works." that thou art neither cold or hot. I would thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spoo thee out of my mouth. There's nothing more nauseating before God than somebody who is wishy-washy on their positioning. Who's someone who's carried about with every wind of dogma by the sight of men, somebody who can't make up their mind as to what positioning or line they're going to tow in terms of what the scriptures convey. Paul furthermore declares to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's going to be a falling away first. This is not news. When we look in John 6 and 66, we see the disciples who had followed the Lord Jesus Christ said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? They walked away from the Lord because there was a few things the Lord brought to mind that these parties couldn't agree with. So this is the dilemma that we're facing as the days wear down, as we get closer and closer to the day of Christ. Believers are going to get offended at the counsel of sound doctrine, and they're going to become apostate. So this is nothing that's uncommon. We've been warned of these things, but we should be aware when they are coming our way as to what they're really trying to do. It may sound good that we all want to just love Jesus and Jesus is the only thing that really matters but when we look closer into the scripture we're going to see that you cannot separate sound doctrine from Jesus Christ they go hand in glove one with another so we're going to we're going to show this as we walk through some of these scriptures now furthermore in Jude chapter 1 verse 3 he states beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That is a charge. And as the days wear down and we draw nigh and closer and closer to the day of Christ, Thessalonians is going to play a more prominent role and we're going to have to garrison ourselves about and prepare ourselves for the onslaught. He continues on and states here in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, 
do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry or of thy ministry. First Thessalonians 5.21 states, Prove all things, hold fast that, which is good. Furthermore, Paul says to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable first, the very first thing that it's profitable for is doctrine. For doctrine. And if you're unsound in doctrine, for reproof. We have to correct, we have to reprove that party, and then for correction, that will correct the party for instruction in righteousness. Ultimately, this will instruct the party to yield to God's counsel, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's the objective. That's what the scriptures are here for. First thing, doctrine. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, the scriptures state, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. We are soldiers. In the army of Jesus Christ, we are at warfare. We are earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. We are reproving, we are rebuking, we are exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That time is here and now. Paul reminds the saints in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 17, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, and you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and the scriptures say, by none other than Jesus Christ, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We need the truth. And we're going to be sanctified by the truth. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about your truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helm of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we have to take that sword of the Spirit. We have to defend the faith. We have to use it as a defensive weapon to defend the faith. And sometimes we use it offensively to make our case. And we have to make a case for the truth. Furthermore, the saints are called to separate from other parties stemming from an individual's choice not to adhere to sound doctrine. If we look in Romans chapter 16, verse 17, the Apostle Paul states, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. That's a charge. That's for our betterment. That's so that you and I don't get entangled in this warfare with a fight that is fruitless, that will amount to nothing. After the first and second admonition, Paul writes to the party of Titus. He says, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. It's time to move on to the next one. Take the fight to someone else. And to see if we can win them over to our camp. And hopefully we can win many into our camp, be it on a salvation front and or be it from a doctrinal standpoint, bringing that party into a more firmer positioning in terms of their adherence to sound doctrine.